true crime fanatics. This is what I'm kitting up today. I actually haven't started this one yet, but it is from Prism when Adele and Joe owned it, and it's a square. So there you go, that's what I am kitting up today. So if I'm kitting up, you know what that means. It's murder, mystery, and kitten up Sunday. Yes, it is. Sorry, I've been MIA on my true crime. I know, it's the first thing that I have to kind of put aside when life gets manic. And it did get a bit manic there for a while this week, as you are probably all aware. But done, dusted, and over it. So let's sit down and diamond paint. And yeah, I've been super, super busy in the store. Um, all of your orders came in. I have a couple left to post stateside, um, just a couple, and they will be picked up tomorrow. So yes, there you go. That is what I've been up to. Uh, it's, it's been manic absolute manic and orders are flying in which is great and thank you thank you so your kits are on the way uk and stateside you should have them monday slash tuesday if not already so there you go that is that so today i picked a true crime that oh my gosh uh it's actually, I, I don't, I, I think this lady is a hero. I, I don't think, I mean, yes, she committed a crime and there was definitely witnesses, um, but I hail this lady a hero. Don't know if you're going to agree with me or not, but we shall soon see. Okay, so today we are heading to West Germany and um, yeah, you, you may have heard of this already, but this is dedicated to Marianne Backmeyer. Uh, she was born on the 3rd of June in 1950. She grew up in a small town uh, where her parents fled from East Perugia um, after the Second World War. Marianne was raised in a conservative home with devoutly religious parents. Her father was a, st a stereotypical author authoritative figure. He was a heavy drinker who spent much of his time at a bar close to the family home. Their household wasn't pleasant and drinking made her father more aggressive. Her parents divorced and her mother later remarried. And Marianne, in that dynamic, was perceived as a troubled adolescent uh, by what she was described as a dictatorial stepfather and her mother eventually kicked her out of the house. In 1966, Marianne was 16 and she had her first child who she placed up for adoption as an infant. She became pregnant again at the age of 18 by her boyfriend. All was well, okay? All was well. Marianne was raped shortly before the birth of her second child and her second child was also placed for adoption as an infant. Marianne began dating the manager of a pub where they both worked in 1972 and she became pregnant for a third time and she's now 22. On the 14th of November in 1972, Marianne's third child, Anna, 
was born and she raised her alone. As a result, because she was a single parent, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> because she was a single parent, Marianne took Anna to work when she was working at the pub and she never felt the need to rush home, you know, because obviously Anna's with her. There have been films made uh, about this, this case. Uh, and Mary Ann was portrayed as a single mother who worked well into the night and then slept into the day, leaving her seven-year-old daughter on her own during the day. She, Mary Ann was aware of her lifestyle um, causing problems in, in her, within her lifestyle and she wanted to put Anna up for adoption. Friends later said that Anna was treated like a little adult from a young, a young age, expected to take care of many things on her own. Anna frequently slept in the bar as her mum was partying and working and all of that. Uh, according to a friend of Marianne, Anna was a vibrant youngster who never truly had a pleasant family life. Now, obviously I haven't looked at these films or anything, but what I can see is a woman trying to bring money into the household. Not, I'm not saying that um, Anna didn't suffer as a consequence of that, but she's trying to, uh, you know, raise money and, and keep her her family afloat. Um, I don't know about the partying after work and stuff, but if she was never in a rush to get home, you know? But however, however that lifestyle was, <sighs> yeah. On the 5th of May in 1980, which we're now on the 12th of May, so... When Anna was seven years old, she had an argument with her mum and she decided to skip school. On this day, she was abducted by Klaus Grabowski, a 35-year-old butcher whose home she had visited to before to play with his cats. He held Anna for several hours at his home, sexually assaulted her and ultimately strangled her with a pair of his fiancé's tights. According to the prosecutor, he then tied the girl up, packed her in a box, which he left on the shore of a canal. Grabowski's fiancé then turned him into the police. Grabowski was a convicted sex offender and had previously been sentenced for the sexual abuse of two girls. In 1976, he voluntarily submitted to chemical castration, though it was later revealed that he subsequently underwent hormone treatment trying to reverse it. Once arrested, Grabowski start stated that Anna had sought to extort money from him by threatening to tell her mother about the abuse. He said his fear of going back to prison prompted him to kill her. Now, tragic. No, no parent ever deserves that. How, however bad of a parent you are, however good of a parent you are, nobody deserves that to happen to the, to the child, right? On March the 6th, 1981, the third day of the trial, at around 10 a.m., Marianne was in the courtroom, in room 157, and she was carrying a Beretta 70. She aimed the gun 
at his back and fired seven times. Six shots hit Grabowski, who was killed almost instantly. She then lowered her gun and was apprehended without resistance. Now, I'm going to put a clip in here. I have taken out the audio because they, YouTube doesn't like it. But I'm going to pop this in. And, um, yeah, this is what happened. Okay, so the public reaction. The incident is one of the most well-known cases of vigilante justice in West German history. It sparked extensive media coverage. Television crews from around the country and overseas travelled to report on the case. Marianne sold her story for 100,000 marks. German currency to the news magazine Stern and with that fee she paid her legal costs. While Mary Ann was held in custody many sent messages of support, gifts, flowers to indicate their understanding of her conduct. Nonetheless some still believed that a constitutional state should not condone vigilante justice. In addition, after Stern published her life story and the details about how she allowed her first two children to be adopted by loving families, public opinion shifted as she was no longer appeared to fit the quote, innocent mother, end quote, image. Nonetheless, numerous individuals openly demonstrated their compassion for her action in retaliation. The West German judiciary was criticised by many for enabling a man who had sexually abused two girls to use hormones in order to regain his libido. On November the 2nd, 1982, Mary Ann was initially charged in court with murder. After the prosecution dropped the murder charge, after 28 days of negotiations, the board agreed on the verdict. Four months after opening of proceedings, she was convicted on the 2nd of March 1983 by the district court for manslaughter and unlawful possession of a firearm. The defence's argument that the act was not premeditated and was, most, and was mostly upheld by the court. She was sentenced to six years in prison but was released after serving three. Marianne married a teacher in 1985. Three years later, they moved to Nigeria and lived in a German camp where her husband taught at a German school. They divorced in 1990. After relocating to Sicily, Mary Ann was employed as an aide in a hospice. She was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in Sicily and then returned to Germany. In 1994, 13 years after the shooting, Mary Ann gave an interview to a radio station. The same year, her autobiography appeared with a German publisher. On the 21st of September 1995, she appeared on a television show where she admitted to shooting Grabowski. After careful consideration, 
to enforce the law on him and to prevent him from further spreading lies about Anna. In a documentary from 2006, a former friend also said that Marianne rehearsed the shooting in the basement after Anna's murder. Marianne never expressed remorse for her act of vengeance. Before her death, Marianne asked a reporter to accompany her and film the last stages of her life. On the 17th of September 1996, Marianne died at the age of 46 from pancreatic cancer in hospital and she is now buried next to her daughter Anna in a cemetery in Lubeck. I want to pronounce that as. But there you go. That is the um. Okay, just got a message. Um, but yeah, um, that is the story of Marianne. Um, I think it's very very sad all round. Uh, to be honest with you, but. She was held a hero by a lot of people because what true justice do victims of sexual assault get, uh, truly, you know? Um, it doesn't end. And the fact that she was protecting, in her mind, she was protecting Grabowski from telling lies about Anna. Um, I mean, it was never consensual, to be fair, was it, at seven, but... Yeah, it, it's very, very sad. But I think it's very sad that public opinion changed when they found out that she had two daughters or two children up for adoption. And they were kind of like, oh, well, she's not an, an uh, air quote, innocent mother then. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. In my opinion, she is. Um, but there you go. I will leave that with you um you can always leave your thoughts and comments down below i love reading them and uh thank you thank you for being patient with me coming back with this true crime and uh i'll be back next week with another case i know this is a quick short one but there's not a lot to kind of find you know um, on this case uh and the facts speak for themselves now i don't I don't condone vigilante murder, but, you know, she's she's kind of out there and she had a lot of support from a lot of people. And again, he, he was taking treatment to reverse the chemical uh, castration that's to stop him from doing what he did and he took measures to get that back again um which really but there you go thank you thank you thank you so much for joining me for today's episode i'm sorry it's a short one but a powerful one no less right and i will be back next week stay safe out there and don't take the law into your own hands bye